The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure delights and I I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will everyone and welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning and we're going to start this morning by singing a hymn from Singing the Faith and it's number 343 and it's a beautiful song and it's actually Beautiful Saviour. All my days I will sing a song of gladness. Let's sing together.
And now let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for your amazing design of the world we live in. We are spellbound by the sunsets and the sunrises. We marvel at the fact that everything has its place in the universe. That if one thing is taken away, there is an imbalance in nature. That each species relies on another. That even though we are at the pinnacle of your creation on earth, our very lives depend on the smallest creatures. We are humbled when we see the stars of heaven and the mountains and the power of the crashing waves. When we realise the great power you have and that you made us a little lower than the angels, we are overwhelmed with love and gratitude towards you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your planet, for the vast potential for good and healthy living, for the very textures, tastes, colours and shapes which allow us to enjoy our food. We thank you for the countryside and the seaside which encourage us to explore your creation and exercise our bodies. We thank you for all that stimulates our mind. Quizzes, books, dramas and documentaries. Lord, we know so little of your world and we are grateful for those who explore it and reveal to us its treasures. Forgive us, Lord, when we take your gift for granted, when we abuse what you have so generously given us to our, for our own ends. We fail to realise how much we are taking out of this planet with little thought of replacing it or renewing it. Lord, help us to see that we need to, what we need to do to get the balance right and in using the resources of the world and allowing our planet to renew itself. Amen. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing again now another lovely hymn from Singing the Faith and it's number 372 come down o love divine
The reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 18, reading verse 21 to 35, and it's entitled The Unforgiving Servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, when my fellow believer sins against me, how many times must I forgive him? Should I forgive him as many as seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, you must forgive him more than seven times. You must forgive him even more than 77 times. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who decided to collect the money his servants owed him. When the king began to collect his money, a servant who owed him several thousand pounds was brought to him. But the servant did not have enough money to pay his master. So the master ordered that everything the servant owed should be sold, even the servant's wife and children. Then the money would be used to pay the king what the servant owed. But the servant fell on his knees and begged, be patient with me and I will pay you everything I owe. The master felt sorry for his servant and told him he did not have to pay anything back. Then he let the servant free. Later, that same servant found another servant who owed him a few pounds. The servant grabbed him round the neck and said, pay me the money you owe me. The other servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you everything you owe. But the first servant refused to be patient. He threw the other servant into prison until he could pay everything he owed. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were very sorry. So they went and told their master all that had happened. Then the master called his servant in and said, you evil servant, because you begged me to forget what you owed, I told you that you did not have to pay anything. You should have shown mercy to the other servant, just as I showed mercy to you. The master was very angry and put the servant in prison and punished him until he could pay everything he owed. This king did what my heavenly father will do to you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Thanks be to God for that reading. And we're going to sing again now, a hymn from Singing the Faith, and it's number 286. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? That gave itself
Thank you, Kathy, for leading our opening devotions. This morning, I want us to look at our attitude, our attitude to God and our attitude to other people. Many years ago, I heard an illustration about this passage from Matthew. There was a brother and sister, and the brother was a terrible tease. When the girl was at Sunday school, her teacher said to her class that they needed to forgive people 77 times. The girl bought a notebook and started to record all the things that her brother had done wrong to her. Soon enough, the notebook was nearly full. One day, the family went out for a picnic in the park. The two children were playing nearby in, next to a stream. There was a log across the stream and the boy easily walked on the log to the other side. He then goaded his sister to follow him. As the girl was halfway across the log, the boy pushed the log and she fell into the stream. As she pulled herself out, soaking wet and angry, she noticed her notebook floating in the water. She realized that she couldn't keep carrying on recording all her brother's sins. And so she decided to continue to forgive him. It takes a lot of effort to remember all those people who have wronged us. We carry these grudges around with us, but they don't do us any good. We become negative in our attitude to everyone. It is not easy to forgive, and we may not be able to forgive straight away, but it is more healthy for us both spiritually and mentally to forgive. Jesus tells a story to his, his listeners, the disciples, to help them to understand about forgiveness. The story is about a man who has racked up so much debt he cannot possibly pay it back in his lifetime. The master decides to look through the accounts and comes across a huge debt which is owed to him. He calls the man in to explain himself. But after the explanation, the master decides that the man and his family must pay the debt back by being sold into slavery. The man falls on his knees and pleads with the master to forgive him. And the master does. He cancels all the debt. Do we uh, see ourselves in this man? First of all, we do not acknowledge the debt that we owe to God. We think it is a lot smaller than what it actually is. Secondly, we think we can pay the debt off with all our good works. If we are not careful, we will be hardly aware of the debt we owe. That is until something happens in our life and we fall under God's spotlight. Today, with the uncertain times we live in, we look for greater security, not just for our own physical well-being, but for our souls as well. 
There are times in our life when we aren't penitent. Perhaps something in our life goes wrong and we turn to God. Or we make a terrible mistake and we have to say sorry to God and to those that we have hurt. Perhaps then we have a clearer idea of what a sinner we are. But to our amazement, God freely forgives us and wipes the slate clean. We are so overjoyed because we realise how much God loves us. The relief the man must have felt when this great burden of debt was lifted from his shoulders must have been incredible. Can we recall a time like this? When you felt God's love burst into your life, when you knew you had done something wrong and God forgave you. Our opening hymn reflects this joy. All my days I will sing this song of gladness. Give my praise to the fountain of delights. For in my helplessness you heard my cry. And waves of mercy poured down on my life. We come away from this experience of God's forgiveness with the attitude of wanting to be a better Christian. But before long, we come across someone who has hurt us in the past. Our heart might still be bruised from the experience and our anger may be smouldering away under the surface. As the person approaches us, we let them know how much we are hurt or how angry we are. The person apologises, but we are not interested. We want our pound of flesh. They have hurt us, and so we want to hurt them in return. We do not even think about our recent encounter with God. We felt so free when we received God's forgiveness but now we just feel angry. Sometimes we feel more angry when the person apologises to us because we wanted to continue to be angry with them, to have the moral eye ground over them and the apology wipes all that away. Maybe we come to our senses and remember how much God has forgiven us or it may take a friend to just nudge us in the right direction. We realise we need to fully forgive them and that may take courage for us to actually forgive them and to tell them that they are forgiven. Because God has forgiven us, enable, it enables us to forgive someone else. And that may enable that person to give, forgive someone else. And so the cycle goes on. In Matthew chapter eight, 18, verse 34, it talks about the master's response. In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. It is a reminder that if we hold unforgiveness and grudges in our hearts, we'll be tormented by them. It will be like we're in a prison because we will not be able to go beyond our unforgiveness. It will be a barrier that holds us back. It will influence our whole life and our attitude to everyone not just the person we hold a grudge against. We have all come across bitter, negative people. They are not usually the type of person that we want to spend too much time with. Our attitude should be one of appreciation and gratitude. God has forgiven us far beyond what we can ever imagine and our focus should be on that 
and not on what other people have done to us. Again, if we think of the words of the hymn we have just sung, what kind of love is this that gave itself for me? I am the guilty one, yet I go free. By grace I have been saved, it is the gift of God. He destined me to be his own, such is his love. And also the words to the hymn we will sing next. Oh, would I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin, because the sinless Saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. When our focus is on what God has done for us, there is no room to think about what other people have done to us. We are overwhelmed by the love and mercy that God has shown to us. Our hearts and minds should be full of appreciation for what God has done for us. We need to keep coming back to the cross and kneeling before it. There will be times when we drift away and get angry with someone, but if we kneel at the cross, our focus will once again be on what God has done for us. Amen. And now we sing the hymn which I mentioned before, Before the Throne of God Above. Shall we sing?
let us pray. Lord, we come before you to pray for our nation. We are still in the grip of the pandemic. We do have better resources to combat the disease and we are far better informed than we were six months ago. But people are still losing their lives and those who do survive are taking a long time to recover. We once again pray for our government, that you will give them wisdom and guidance in the policies they produce and the decisions they make. We want to thank our NHS staff for all they continue to do in their general care and especially when dealing with COVID-19 patients. We ask that you will protect all the health service staff and those doing essential work. Help us all to be vigilant when we are outside and mixing with other people in our places of work and leisure. We continue to pray for those who demonstrate for freedom and justice in their own land. Help them to get their message across to those in authority. We pray that you will protect them from intimidation and threats. We also pray for the election that will happen in America in November. We ask that the person you want in the White House will succeed. Amen. And now we will sing one of my favourite songs from North End and it's I Saw the Light.
now shall we say the blessing together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Thank you for listening and participating hopefully today in singing the hymns and just a reminder that next Sunday we will focus on harvest. So I hope you keep safe and God bless. Please look at the website to see what else is happening and thank you for joining with us. Goodbye.